Hey y'all, I'm Allie Spears, and this is Ag Chicks, where we dig deep with the women who are helping to feed the world. I'm super excited to sit down and chat with Carly. Carly is a fellow Cowgirl 30 Under 30 um, honoree, and so I'm excited to get to know a little bit more about you and a little bit more about how you're connected to agriculture and the Western industry and lifestyle. So without further ado, Carly, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be on here. So um, I actually grew up um, in the Northeast um, on Long Island for most of my life. Um, I got recruited to be on the TCU equestrian team. Um, I was on the reigning team there and then kind of just fell in love with Fort Worth um, and being able to have the mix of kind of all the city amenities, but then still this huge base of Western culture um, and the agricultural kind of culture here um, in Texas and in Fort Worth specifically. So I knew after graduation that I wanted to somehow stay in the industry if I could. Um, and I ended up doing that by way of working at TX Whiskey. Um, and I helped them kind of develop their sponsorships and partnerships um, with some of the horse show associations, um, as well as working with some of the rodeos that they sponsored. Um, and now I'm actually the business development manager at the National Cutting Horse Association here in Fort Worth. Yeah, and that's like such a cool title and thing. And we're going to get into all of that because I want to know way Perfect. more about all of that. Um, but my first thing I want to jump into is as a fellow Texas transplant, what was it like coming from not Texas and yeah. being in Texas because it's a little bit of an adjustment, um, especially, you know, being a, a foreigner as they call us. Um, yes. So what was your experience like? Um, I was pretty lucky in that I kind of had a natural community by going here for school. Um, and I mean, TCU is kind of its own bubble. Right. Um, so that part of the transition wasn't as hard. It really was kind of after graduation kind of actually trying to make my foothold here. Um, I think the biggest thing was learning to trust that most people here are actually that friendly, yes. um, that there's not kind of the, these ill intentions um, and that realizing that people in this industry do really just want to help each other out and kind of that there is this larger network um, of people that you can reach out to that are within this Western industry that are so willing to help and kind of show you the ropes. Um, I was very lucky that when I was at TX, um, I had great people that I worked with, especially um, Kurt Crawford, who's over at APHA now. Um, he was kind of a person that took me under his wing and introduced me to a ton of people um, and really helped me kind of get my start in the industry um, professionally. So the transition, I think more um, the food was the hardest transition for me, um, being used to kind of being able to get Italian food on every corner and eating that a lot and not really, you know, having a ton of Tex-Mex. Um, that was kind of, for me, the biggest culture shock um, mm -hmm. was the food differences. <laughs> yes, I would say the same thing. I think the food is definitely different. So I'm from California originally and then came here for um, school and similar situation kind of stuck around. Um, but I'm glad that you mentioned the fact that people are actually friendly and like they're genuinely yes. nice here. Yes. That was like the weirdest adjustment for me. Like people would hold the door open and I'll be like, all right, what do you want? And like, yes, oh, exactly. Friendly. <laughs> like it was, yes, so it, was it was so weird. Even like on my move in day at TCU, um, I had a TV kind of still in the box mm -hmm. um, and I just got it as a gift in these guys had offered to carry it up the stairs for me. And immediately I was like, oh, they want to take my TV. Yeah. And then I realized, no, they just are trying to be nice and polite and offer help like to a stranger. Yes. Um, so that was definitely a big adjustment. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And then yes, the food that was well, in the Tex-Mex situation here, yeah. as much as I love it, like I'm used to like authentic Mexican food. And so my boyfriend and I always get in debates over where the better Mexican food is. Um, I'm still a diehard California Mexican food fan, but yes. I've, I've learned to love and appreciate Tex-Mex. <laughs> yes, it is definitely a cuisine of its own. Um, it's interesting because that's not really something that I ever, you know, kind of had a lot of growing up. Um, so I'm very thankful to be here because it's one of my favorite types of food now. And I can't imagine 
living without it on every corner here. I know, right? A different, a different food staple on the corners here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so you mentioned you obviously were, were born and raised um, not in Texas and um, in New Jersey, correct? Uh, New York. New York, I'm sorry. Um, so very, and were you born or were you raised in more of a suburban area or kind of like upstate New York where it is kind of more rural? Um, it was suburban. Um, so I lived on Long Island, so really close oh, yeah, to the yeah. beach. Um, so definitely not at all um, rural in the part of Long Island that I grew up in. Um, that for me, it always kind of seemed a little bit far-fetched to be able to live my dream of working kind of in this equestrian Western industry, just because I didn't know anyone in it growing up. Um, I didn't realize kind of all the careers that were out there um, and really kind of just got into it through riding horses and meeting people that way and kind of learning, um, working with my horse trainer, I helped him out with uh, his social media when I was in high school. And so really kind of realizing the dynamics between the sponsors that he had and his customers and how all of that played into um, social media marketing. Um, and so with that, it kind of made me realize that I could really make a career in this industry. And that has always kind of been my goal. And so I'm happy now to be able to say that my main focus is um, growing the industry and growing the Cutting Horse Association. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think obviously everybody's story is different and unique, but I do find that a common thread between some of us is that it started with a horse or a heifer or a show pig or something yes. like that. And I just love that it's, that's something that seems so small at the time, but that one little factor has really changed the course of some of our lives. Um, so for you, obviously that kind of really showed you a side of an industry that you really were not probably have been exposed to otherwise no other than um kind of getting to show horses I would have never been exposed to it um where I was growing up so it was definitely interesting I've always kind of had to explain to people what exactly it was um that I was doing and what I was competing in and honestly having to do that so much and having the people that surrounded me not familiar with the industry has really helped me now um, as I am kind of reaching out to different groups of people that are not as familiar with the Western industry or the Western lifestyle um, and bringing them kind of into the fold, um, you know, this Yellowstone effect that we're seeing with so many new people being interested in the Western industry and the Western lifestyle. Um, it's a huge opportunity to kind of bring people into the fold and do some education um, and let them know kind of, you know, what all is out there um, and just be as welcoming as possible. And so I think kind of growing up in that way where I was always having to, you know, kind of explain to people what it was that I was doing and why I was interested in it um, has really made it an easier transition into the role that I am in now, um, kind of just with always doing some level of education um, on what we're doing. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm glad you mentioned this, actually. Um, the Yellowstone uh, factor that is occurring. What are your, cause everybody has different. And I, I warned you, I said, I'm not going to do anything crazy controversial. No. <laughs> the way you did this, I think it perfectly matches up if you're, um, good with going this direction. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Yellowstone and how that's kind of impacting the industry? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I will start by saying that I may be a little biased. Um, mm -hmm. Taylor Sheridan, I, I, Absolutely love him and his wife. Um, they're great partners of us. Um, and I joke around and say that Taylor is my fairy godfather because he is kind of the person that um, really recommended me for the job that I am in now. Um, so I have a lot to think of him. And so I will start by saying that I am completely biased. I'm a diehard Taylor Sheridan fan um, through and through. But what I've seen um, on both sides of the industry, you know, before I was kind of a sponsor looking in to the industry when I was at TX, and now I'm kind of on the other side of things, mm -hmm. is really just a huge interest in the lifestyle. And yes, you know, there are critics that will say, oh, it's not completely factual, like some of it. Yes, it's, it's drama. It's Hollywood. Right. It's kind of the way that you can get people interested. I mean, we are kind of people that just. Um, and I think this incredible opportunity, you know, to bring new people into this lifestyle that are interested in it, that other than the show, they have 
had an introduction to the industry. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I'm also a huge fan. We are Yellowstone, uh, 1886, all the way. Yes. We watched um, what's Mayor of Kingstown. Like, we are also hardcore. Yes. <laughs> um, but I agree. I think that this has created a very unique opportunity for those of us in the industry to, to show, like, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, like you said, there's Hollywood and theatrics to it, obviously. Yes. Um, but, like, there's a lot of reality behind it, too. And it's, mm-hmm. um, I think, taking some of the themes of, like, fighting for what you love and fighting for the industry and really putting it on a platform where everyone can kind of relate and connect to it. So mm-hmm. I think it's a really good opportunity for us to utilize that exposure um, to people who maybe would not have ever given two thoughts to a, a cattle rancher you know what I mean so because that's really yes. the premise of it is, is a cattle ranch um exactly. so I agree I think it's a, a really unique thing um and I hope more of it comes because I think it's a good way for us to get our foot in the door if nothing else yes absolutely I mean I'm even seeing um you know friends that I have that are not at all familiar with the industry seeing metallic cat for an example on Yellowstone and then seeing our fraternity marketing and connecting that that's what it is that our title sponsor is metallic cap that it's this great stallion just of like a 30 second one minute feature on yellowstone yeah. um it's just incredible the exposure that our industry is getting um and of course we're super thankful for it and trying to do everything that we can um we actually ran a commercial on last season of yellowstone promoting the ncha and kind of the lifestyle that accompanies being a member and being a part of this industry. And I mean, the growth that we've seen from running things like that and just being able to capture the audience that um, Taylor and his team have created has been an incredible, incredible opportunity for us. Yeah. And I commend y'all for taking um, the opportunity and running with it, because I think it's a, it's also one of those situations where it's uncharted waters, right? Like we don't, as an industry, we're like, "Mm, we don't know about this yet. And so for those yes. pioneers that can accept it and roll with it, I think it's going to have a huge payoff in the end. Yes, that's what we're hoping. Um, so far, so good. But we definitely are always trying to find different ways to reach people. And, you know, there's a lot of traditional things that have been done in the past. Um, but I mean, I commend really Jay and the team that came before me at NCHA was kind of their brainchild, but being able to, you know, take that leap of faith, take that risk and just see if it would pay off and being able to try, you know, kind of try and fail. And I think that's some things in our industry, people are so used to that, you know, there's a cycle of trying and failing. And then there are other pieces of the industry that are just kind of set in their ways. And, um, could use a little bit of innovation and forward thinking. So I'm excited, especially with some of the new things that other groups are doing um, to see how this industry kind of grows and innovates moving forward. Yeah, I think that's a innovate. I love that word. And I think that's one that we need to focus a little bit more on as we evolve with society. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) And so I want you to talk a little bit about your current role. And maybe for somebody who's listening that has zero knowledge of like the horse industry, any of that, can you kind of walk us through maybe what the the organization itself is and then what your role is as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I work for the National Cutting Horse Association. So we are essentially kind of the governing body um, to most cutting horse shows that are going on here um, and then also internationally. Okay. So what I do is really kind of I work mainly with our sponsors and partners um, and developing business in that way. So bringing new sponsors and new partners into the fold um, to be able to grow kind of what we're doing. Um, And that can be something from the level of like a corporate sponsorship with someone like Kubota um, to working with Visit Fort Worth, um, which is the Visitors Bureau here to be able to promote our events to a local audience, but to also a wider audience to say, hey, when you are visiting Fort Worth from this foreign country, we have this event that's going on. Come check it out. Come learn more about what we do. Um, And then it's also a little bit of community outreach. Um, For example, we'll go to events like the Run for a Million, um, and we have actually VR goggles that you can put on, and it makes you feel like you are actually on a horse cutting 
cows on it. Oh, cool. So um, doing different things like that, that um, as well as, I mean, my role is super diverse and that's kind of what I love about it is every day is a little different. Um, it's even, you know, doing outreach to TCU that we have here and working with their sports marketing team and their sports marketing classes, excuse mm -hmm. me, and seeing, you know, kind of what new ideas they may have um, as people that are slightly familiar with the industry, um, but, you know, not completely immersed in it. Um, and so kind of anything that can help grow the association could be something that I'm helping with. Um, I work super closely with our marketing team as well. Um, and then other groups like the Converse Cowboy working with different groups for production of content creation, um, just depending on kind of what it all looks like. Yeah, so a woman of many hats, it sounds like. <laughs> yes, and I will say, I think that's kind of my favorite part of my job is that every day is different. Um, and actually, Mike Roberts, who is also known as the Converse Cowboy, um, I saw him at the show because we work very closely with them. They're great partners. We actually just released um, a video that they produced for us um, about the history of um, cutting horse breeding and kind of how it's evolved over the years. Um, but I saw him once, you know, I was helping out with production. Another time he walked out and I was in the flag pen helping out while, you know, someone was needing to take a break. And it's really just everything that needs to be done. Um, we kind of, as a whole team, or really have a team first mentality. So there's no one saying, you know, that's not my job or that's not what I do. Um, it's really kind of everyone is great about stepping up and being able to kind of just do whatever needs to be done. And I mean, that's one of my favorite parts about working at NCHA is that really the ent entire staff has that kind of team first mentality. That's super important uh, when you're working in situations like that where you really do need everyone on board um, and yes. have everyone's consensus or if not consensus, yes. <laughs> helpful ideas to get through challenges. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you mentioned um, kind of at the very beginning about Fort Worth and how you love the city and its uniqueness. I'm assuming, and as you kind of touched on, Fort Worth is really kind of essential to what you guys do in terms of your home base and kind of it really being like an attraction but also like it's modern and they've done a great job of restoring and um building it up lately I think it's it's come a long way from what it was but also it still has that like feel of western like heritage and vibe there making it super unique how has that played into things that you guys do as far as it being a, a attraction for and location for you guys to utilize Yes, I mean, for us, um, kind of what we've been focusing on lately is really working with groups like Visit Fort Worth um, that can help kind of promote the city as a whole and all of the attractions that go into it, um, really kind of just highlighting these events that we have, doing a lot more outreach. Um, I mean, with their network and our network combined, there's just so much of a bigger reach um, that we can do media wise and even working with local influencers to come and visit our events and see everything that we have going on. Um, but really, I mean, what we're trying to do now, even with some of the things that we're working on is to bring that community in because there is such an incredible community here in Fort Worth that has been so supportive of the Cunning Horse Association in the past. Um, and it's kind of what we're working on now is how do we bring more of those people into the fold and show them kind of what we're doing and figure out how we can partner with them in new and exciting ways. Um, one example is we're actually hosting um, a fashion show at our summer cutting event. And so we are working with Western Runway on that, where we will be working with Visit Fort Worth to bring in local influencers and then also our trade show vendors that some are here in Fort Worth, some are in Weatherford, um, some come from all over the country. Um, but really kind of creating new things to give people that are here locally a reason um, to come to our events is what our focus is now, because there are so many amazing people in this community that do want to be supportive and are involved, like you said, in that Western lifestyle. Mm -hmm. There's such a huge um, Western heritage to pull from here. And I think now, especially with all of the renovations and the new projects that have happened with 1883 filming here, um, there's really a resurgence of interest in being involved in the Western industry. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think it's, uh, again, another just kind of unique opportunity and the whole right place, right time situation. I think it's now is a great time to take advantage of some of those things. Absolutely. And um, speaking on just cutting horse association in general. So I think that's cutting horses in general in the industry is something that maybe, you know, people don't necessarily think of being um, a huge or key player in the horse side of things. Um, I think that, you know, typical kind of everyday person thinks, you know, oh, there's a horse. Great. It's a horse. You ride it, blah, blah, blah. However, as you know, cutting horses and that whole side of things is a whole world within its own, clearly, right? There's associations yes. <laughs> and all these things that have are have been made to support that. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe what cutting horse, uh, cutting horses are, their kind of role and just their importance? Because I mean, they're athletes really at the end of the day and their, um, you know, their genetics are so perfectly uh, created and, and mixed and to try to get the best possible situation. So can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So I'll kind of start with um, the event itself first or the sport and how kind of we came to be. So it originates really from being on a ranch and having a need to separate one cow from the herd. So mm -hmm whether it was to doctor it, to check on it, to be able to sort, you know, there's so many different reasons that you could need to separate a cow or a few cows from the herd. So that's really where the initial piece of cutting came from, was having kind of the strategy and having a force and have kind of the knowledge of the way how to be to go to the herd and break one out. What you see in the show pen is lots of cows in. Um, there's so much strategy that goes into it now. The, all the trainers kind of sitting up above the cows, watching them as they're settling, making the list of which ones they want to pull from the herd. But essentially, what you're going to do is at some point you'll cut ideally three. If it, I mean, if you get a really good cow, maybe two. Um, but go into the herd at least one deep cut, and by that meaning, kind of to the back. So, in the mouth um, and cow, it, which um, I explained it at the simplest form, form of what you see the cow doing, the horse should be a mirror image of that. The cow goes right, your horse should be going that way. And working the cow and something that's really unique about the horse industry and really that showcases how athletic these horses are is that when a rider is actually kind of working the cow, they put their hand down on the neck and the horse is the one. And of course the rider's cueing them with their legs, but they can't use their hand at all. And it's really that horse and it's innate cow sense and athletic ability and the training that has gone into that. Um, you kind of just have to hope that all of your training has worked um, and trust all the practice practice that you've done because there's no really hand aid that you can use. You just have to put your hand on their neck and let them work. Um, which for me, coming in from another side of the industry was the craziest thing to me to just be like, you, uh, I'm like, and you just put the hand down and they just work and they just do it. Um, yeah. Uh, so that um, is definitely unique kind of to the cutting industry for sure. Um, and with that kind of now, as you know, as anything evolves, there's always different levels of innovation. And so at its simplest level, you can kind of get on a horse and you can get on a good cutting horse with not a ton of not a ton of riding experience. Um, it's kind of the same reason that we can do these different types of celebrity cutting where you can get a few lessons and figure out how at its simplest form to be able to cut and compete. Um, and so for us, that would typically, if you're not a celebrity, it typically would look like um, starting out at our weekend cutting events or our circuit, um, which would be kind of more native to your area. And then at its most complex, you'll kind of see our world finals, our triple crown events, and the people that really do eat, sleep, breathe this event, right. um, that spend hours watching cows, learning how they move, learning how they react to things, and really kind of our masters of the art of understanding that cattle 
and understanding their horses um, and how to train them. And so there's kind of a wide array of the sport, just like anything. Um, if you think about football, you know, there's kind of peewee football that it's just yeah. starting out, but then you also have people that are playing college football or the NFL. And so our sports are no different in terms of the really um, depth that we have um, in terms of talent and horses and the different kind of abilities that are within our association. Yes. And personally, I obviously knew what cutting was and, and being raised in um, the cattle side of things, but I had never really closely paid attention to it, if I'm being 100% honest. Yeah. And in 2021, no, excuse me, 2020, we had a booth at NFR and the cutting horse show was set up right across the hall from us. And they yes. were there for three weeks or whatever, the same amount of time we were. And so I spent a lot of time over there and I watched a lot of videos and a lot of horses and I was amazed. I mean, like you said, this truly is an art and a sport. Uh, it's chorus deepest point um and so if you are not familiar with this i would highly suggest y'all going and doing a search on youtube if nothing else and watching this because it's amazing to see um, not only the horses work but then obviously that connection with their rider and then the fact that they can just mirror exactly what the cattle are doing um to really complete the goal at the end of the day to to um, sort them off or whatever it may be so um a really unique and and very cool thing to watch um, but Carly, as we're kind of winding down on time here, I have kind of one more question purely focused on you. Um, but why did you decide to um, do the application for Cowgirl 30 Under 30 and kind of um, take that route of things here lately? Yes. So um, this is something I haven't told a lot of people. So I actually applied last year um, and did not make it. And so I had always kind of looked up to the, um, the other women that had received the award before um, and just thought, you know, kind of what an incredible network and something to be a part of. And so I had applied the first year, didn't get chosen. Um, to be candid, I was absolutely crushed um, mm -hmm. and didn't know if I was going to apply again and really kind of being in this industry and fully immersed in it and seeing everyone's kind of failures every day, mm -hmm. but then, you know, still getting up and going to work the next day and doing whatever you need to do to be able to reach that goal. Um, it really kind of just lit a fire within me to be able to do more and be involved more in the industry um, and see kind of how I could push myself to be able to be kind of worthy, if you yeah. will, um, of getting the award. So um, that's why I kind of I applied again this year and thankfully I got it and you know it's been an incredible opportunity um, to be able to network with great women like you and see kind of what everyone is working on um, and how we can all be involved with each other um, and grow the industry as a whole. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And so I'm yes. so glad that you were a part of my group because now we get to connect. Um, but Absolutely. also, also just seeing the different facets that all of these incredible women are involved in um, and things that you wouldn't think of um, and, and how that can all kind of come together under the umbrella of, you know, agriculture and the Western industry. Um, yes. I think for me, as my goal through doing this podcast of highlighting women in this industry. Um, it's just kind of a reaffirming, a reaffirming to me that this is such an important thing to talk about because um, there isn't a little box that we all have to fit in. There's so Absolutely. many different things that you can do and still be connected to uh, mm -hmm. this, this greater industry and, and be an important role in all of that as well. So congratulations. Absolutely. I'm so Thank excited. You. Congratulations to you as well. I'm really glad, you know, that we are in the same class and I agree that kind of everything happens for a reason. And it's been really great to meet a lot of um, gals that I hadn't known before. Um, I, you know, in some of the other classes, I feel like I knew a lot of the people mm -hmm. in those. And so um, I'm really thankful to be able to have the opportunity to meet so many new incredible women and have this network, you know, to kind of run ideas past and have involved um, and collaborate when you can. So I'm really, really thankful to be able to be a part of this class. 
Well, me too. I'm glad we're, we're in this together. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, Carly, thank you so much for spending some time with me today and telling us a little bit about yourself and what you are doing um, in the industry. If somebody is wanting to connect or reach out, what is the best way for them to do that? Yes. Um, so they can either email me. Um, my email is on the NCHA website on the staff directory, but it's just cmontemiro at nchacutting.com um, or they can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is Carly from the block. <laughs> um, and uh, other than that, kind of just following um, the NCHA social channels to be able to kind of keep up with what we're doing and what we're working on lately. Yes. Awesome. Well, as always, I will put all that information in the show notes and description. And Carly, again, thanks so much for taking time to sit down and chat with me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ag Chicks. Don't forget to follow along on social media at Ag Chicks on Instagram and Facebook, and that every episode has a visual version on YouTube on the Ag Chicks channel.